Ever run into a belligerent, disrespectful horse? Ever own one? Stick around for the first in a series dealing with this guy. Here we go. Hi, I'm Herm Gailey. We're here to work with a horse belonging to my friends, the Hawks. Uh, he has developed sort of a belligerent attitude. Now, every horse has a story. And you may want to pan over on him so they can watch what he's doing. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. He's developed a bit of a belligerent attitude, not through the fault of these folks. They bought this gelding about four years ago. He was six or seven years old and basically unbroke. And these two kids, uh, Melanie and her sister, sort of tackled him and they got him going pretty good. And they were feeling their way along at that point, kind of doing it on their own. And they got him to where he was pretty reliable. Then this last summer, they leased him with an option to purchase. The, the person who leased him decided not to buy him, sent him back. And when he arrived back at their place, he had been pretty completely retrained, not necessarily in a good way. Uh, he had gotten to where if you asked him to go forward, he would kick up his heels. He would refuse to steer. Uh, he generally would have an attitude. He was hard to, to walk around and hard to lead. And if you look at him now, you can see some of that. What we're going to do is start the process of sort of getting him back to where he should be and maybe building up some better basics than what he ever had over time to where if something would go wrong again, you got the building blocks there to go back to to fix. So what we're going to do first is we're going to let Melanie, who is now, you're 14, right, Mel? Yeah. Because she's been saying she's 14 for about three or four years, but I'm pretty sure she's made it now. Uh, and she can't resist correcting him, but he would like to have climbed right on top of her. Uh, so we're going to start at the beginning, but what I want to show is how he's doing. Now, we rode him about three or four days ago just to get an idea of where he was and sort of did a few things with him, but I would be willing to bet that what little we did didn't really stick. So what we're gonna have Mel do is get on him and ride him around. All I want you to do is get on his back, steer him in a nice big circle, use at least half of the whole pen here, and see how he reacts. If he wants to walk off when you get on him, let's see if that's what he wants to do. What we wanna do is diagnose what's going on not kind of sugarcoat it for now. So go for it. So you can see, and that is something we worked on a little the last time, he wants to walk off and then he just decides he's gonna trot. And he's slinging his head around like he's, he's just looking for a bit of a challenge. And there he goes. And Mel, do whatever you need to do to save your life. I want to demonstrate this, but we don't want to lose you in the process. So kind of, kind of break him down and don't let him have his own way completely. And just sort of steer him around a little bit so we can see how he wants to be. So the one thing he's doing, there you go. That's, now one thing you'll find about my friend Melanie, which I wouldn't normally say, well, let's put this 14 year old on him. Melanie's a throwback to the days when we all learned things the hard way. So she's fairly fearless. Now we got a pretty good idea of how he is. Now before, before we lose our test rider, let's sort of break him down and we'll decide what we're gonna do with him. So, I use a sort of a sequence when I look at a horse and decide what to do with them. The sequence is observe. You're just a camera. You're watching, saying, what am I seeing? Okay, what I'm seeing is a horse that is very resistant, very belligerent, and very challenging. 
okay, how, how, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing him kicking up. I'm seeing him slinging his head around. I'm seeing him going when he's not asked to go, stopping when he's not asked to stop, going places he's not being asked to go. I'm seeing a horse that wants to walk off when you get on him. I'm seeing a horse that isn't mannerly on the ground. So what we want to do then is decide how to act. So it's observe, then analyze what's going on. Observe, analyze, and then act. That sequence, if you just think to use it, will help you with your interactions with your horses. If you just observe and then act, you cut out the stage of figuring out what to do. If you don't really watch what's going on and you get on to see what can happen, you may not like what happens. And if all you do is sit around and analyze things and you don't do a darn thing if you don't act, you may have it all figured out, but it's never going to get better just because you're thinking about it. So what we're going to do is take a little break, then I'm going to work with him just a little, and then we're going to put Melanie back on him. So we're going to take a little break right now so I can put some different gear on him. Okay, so I have a halter on this horse. We have a riding problem with him, but it sure doesn't start with riding. I mean, right there, he wanted to not only get too close to me, he thought it might be fun to munch on my arm, which didn't sit real well. I'm still observing him, but I'm not liking one bit what I'm seeing. So I'm not going to be polite to him. He comes over, not only gets in my space, but decides to be a little carnivorous about things. I'm going to give him a little adjustment right then and there. Early in our video series, we posted a video called The Three Basics of Horsemanship. One of the things I said in that, we'll, we'll put a link in the comments to that video. One of the things I said in that video is, you start way upstream. And just that little bit, see, he's standing quieter. Because he's a big, rude horse, but he's no dummy. And he kind of knows that he's going to get adjusted. And in fairness to Melanie, I'm sure she would have done that and was dying to do it, but I told her specifically, don't fix him. Let's just see how he wants to be. So here he's not pestering me, but he's also shutting me out. I mean very little to him. That's another thing I'm observing. So I'm going way upstream. I'm not going to start trying to get him to ride right when he doesn't lead right, I'm going to do a little bit of groundwork to kind of get him in a more humble and receptive state of mind. He doesn't want to stand to get on him. Well, we're going to get him to where maybe he wants to stand. My attitude toward groundwork is a lot like what Chris Cox says in his TV series. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet him and take a clinic from him. And he is very much, groundwork's a great thing, especially when it's in service of getting your horse ready to ride. So I don't really believe in teaching a horse a lot of sort of circus tricks unless you want that. And just making groundwork something of its own. But I think if it helps you to make them safer and more reliable to ride, then groundwork is the real deal. So I'm gonna walk him up, now you'll notice I've got my rope, my lead part, in this hand. Because what I want to do is drive his shoulder away from me. And that's easier to do. There you go. It's easier to do if you got your rope in the hand that comes closest to him. So I'm just going to walk him up here. And I'm going to say, move your shoulder over. Oh, and he'll... He'll pin his ears, but then he will get over. And then it gets better. I'm not trying to scare him, but if he gets a little scared as a side effect, I can live with that. See, he wanted to come over on me, but you see, he's already getting to where, number one, he understands that it might be in his best interest to keep an eye on me. But see, he'd, he'd think, maybe I could rear up and intimidate this guy. And I'm not that guy. I, 
And while backing up is better than coming at me, it's not what I was after. I want him to step away from me like that, not jumping in the air and saying, well, am I gonna jump away from you or on you? I want him to step away, step away, And that's how you create a little distance. Now I'm gonna take this scary rope and I'm gonna make sure I haven't gotten him oversensitized. Cause you can go from numb to hypersensitive so fast it's not even funny. Now see, he came at me, not much, but you look way upstream. He looked at me and said, huh, you still look a little tasty. And I said, not really. There, there. Now, that was pretty good. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna agitate him at the moment. Now I will confess, and this has been sort of a pattern in these videos, I will probably work him more on the left than on the right. Because of course you wanna work both sides, but for the filming purpose, I'm going to concentrate on one side, and the left side is logical because we need to get on him. Now one thing you'll notice is, I've not really smacked on him. And if you wonder how much it hurts, ah! oh, oh God, wait, I got to take a break. It doesn't hurt. It makes a little noise, and he thinks it hurts. And maybe you thought it hurt when I whacked myself, but a little ice and a few days rest, I'll be fine. It just isn't any big deal. Now move your shoulder over. No, 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 no. See, he'll numb up pretty quick. There you go, buddy boy. Now I'm sure somebody's gonna watch this and say, well, he whacked on that horse. Well, remember, it doesn't hurt. And if I'm intimidating him a little bit, it's because he would kind of, he would like to have intimidated me. And before he got any traction on that, I figured let's go ahead and put a, a stop to that. Now I'm gonna see, I've been moving his shoulder. Let's see if I can move a little further back his body and move his rib cage and his backside away. Oh, shoulder came over again, see? And that's what you gotta watch for, those little signs. Because otherwise, oh, that's not so bad. I didn't notice him doing anything bad. And all of a sudden, he's crept up on you like a bad dream. You don't need that. Okay, move your whole body over there, bud. Whole body, whole body. Yep, it's a little different. And you don't want him to get to where that becomes a defense or he becomes so sensitized that you can't go back here and mess around with him. But if you just change your attitude, pretty quick, he should move out of the way. There, you see that was a lot better because all I really did was look at him and kind of incline my body toward him. Now, you don't need to crouch down like a mountain lion, but a little bit of body language helps. What I don't do, and I, I absolutely have made no secret of the fact I admire the way Chris Cox works with a horse, but to him, it's natural to crouch down. That works for him. I'm a big awkward guy and if I crouch down, I'd probably break in too. So I figure I'm just going to lean at him and use a little, little bit of body language and maybe not make quite as big a show of it. Not being critical of somebody else, but just pointing out a difference. There's always more than one way. One thing I'm not doing and I'm not going to do with this horse at all is lunging him, working him around me. Time will come when that makes sense. But right now, he would try to get the drop on you, he would try to pull away from you, or he'd try to kick you. So we can start to direct him and move him around us a little bit, 
but as soon as he gets a little motion, see how he tries to take advantage? So I'll drive him away, take him into neutral. So that's what we're going to do just to start the process. And what I want is to get him to where, if that rope's hanging there, at most, he'll shift just because he wants to keep an eye on me. And I don't blame him. That's good. But what I'm not doing is going around saying, whoa, pony, whoa, pony, whoa. Whoa, big boy. I want him saying to me, whoa, big boy, take it easy. I'm going to be good. Whoa, big boy. Now, see, he, he, his attention wandered. And he knew I was looking away from him, and he thought, huh, I could return to, to, to being sinful. But it's not that hard to get his attention back now. But see how he blocks with his shoulder? And if you look, when he gets like that, he doesn't step aside like that. He, he st stays real braced and he bounces up in the air. So move over nice. Move over nice. Move over nice. That's better. And I can be nice to you. It's not that I have anything against this horse or that I dislike him or that I'm angry with him. But I'm not going to let him do what he just did there. See, and I did say I wasn't going to really work this side, and I'm not. But if you notice, he's a little different here because when I shifted to this side, he said, well, I can go back because I'm only broke on that side. Maybe I can put my head on you. And I don't need for him to do that. So I have no grudge against him, but I'm also going to make certain expectations clear. Ooh. Now I want him to understand that just standing still is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. And I want to get him just to where he's not oversensitized, to where I can walk around him. Now you notice my transmitter, as far as body language is concerned, is off. And I don't want him to pick up any signals that just aren't there. What I want is for him to be able to relax when I'm relaxed, but not take liberties. So in a perfect world, I would probably work this horse on the ground three or four days before I got on him. Two reasons why we're not going to do that. One is, we're all here and we want to do something with him. So guess what? We're going to accelerate the thing. The other reason is, I'm not the one who's going to get on him. So Melanie's going to get on him. So I think it's fine to go right to riding him shortly, which we're going to do real soon. We're going to take another break to put the bridle back on him.